I'm just leaving Yelverton, um, going up towards Princetown, uh, and I've decided to do this because I know that the tramway and the railway that came along a little bit later shared the same route. So I thought I would go to the end of my journey and um, start the return journey along the tramway but also telling the story of the railway. Now the railway came to Princetown from Yelverton, or actually it went from Horrobridge um, to Yelver uh, to uh, Princetown. Yes, the railway was headed by Colonel Yelland in uh, 1883, um, headed by the Board of Trade. It eventually got amalgamated with the Great Western Railway, who ran it until 1956 using mixed um, mixed traffic. That's to say, occasional uh, railway, you know, traffic uh, passenger railways, passenger railway, and also um, goods. But. Uh, Uh, closed in 1956, quite a while ahead of um, the beaching report, uh, the beaching plan, which came along in the early 1960s. So it's ten, it closed ten years before the um, the beaching plan came into force. As you can see, I've arrived at Princetown, some 450 metres above sea level. We can attribute this town to the work, if you will, of Thomas Turwitt, who was an influential man in many ways at the turn of the 1800s. Here's a claim he could boast that he was an MP for several years, the personal secretary to the Duchy of Cornwall, and um, many other attributes as well. But partly it was because that he wanted to open up Princetown, but that came a little bit later because it was the time of the Napoleonic Wars of France and Napoleon was creating a threat to us. Now as you can imagine that in conflict you're going to have prisoners of war and indeed there are certainly several, many many prisoners of war who are kept in dire conditions on hulks on, around the coast of Britain. Thomas Turwitt saw this as an opportunity to open up Princetown and one of the first things he tried to do, one of the early things he tried to do was to uh, construct the prison of war camp basically. It is a fad to think that the French actually built their own prison. They didn't. The, um, the, the, the stone was quarried nearby and uh, quarrymen were brought up and builders were brought up but it was a hard and arduous business and uh, being high up on the moor it was rather a desolate place not very comfortable and they did have difficulty building it and quite a few of the builders decided to give up however once the prisoners of war were marched up here they were, some of them were employed to start building and indeed they did finish their, their project. Although Princetown can boast being very high up on Dartmoor, it is not the highest point. That belongs to High Will Hayes, a tour near to Oakhampton. There seems to be some debate as to the highest settlement in the UK, 
Flash in Derbyshire, Buxton in the Peak District and one Lockhead in Dumfries and Galloway seem to be in contention for this accolade. But Princetown, down here in the southwest, is not far behind these claims, but it can claim to be the highest settlement in Dartmoor. North Hestry Tor, communications mask, just above the Princetown, is 517 metres or 1,696 feet above sea level. Today, Princetown attracts tourists, especially the high more adventurers, and it can offer places to stay f from hotel rooms to bunkhouses. But tourism has been an important part of its economy with the Duchy Hotel here, now a visitor centre, and the Plume of Feathers, which are a reminder of its allegiance to the Duchy of Cornwall. Indeed, Prince Charles has visited Princetown on many occasions. Today, the prison is no longer a high-security prison, and its future as a facility is under discussion. However, in 1806, Thomas Turwitt laid the first foundation stone to house 5,000 French prisoners of war. By the time 1815 came, nearly 1,200 prisoners of war had died of smallpox, typhus and pneumonia. And when the French were repatriated, American prisoners of war captured in the War of Independence were moved in. Many died having been shot trying to escape, exposure to the elements, malnutrition, disease, and some were shot by militia for rioting. The end of the war with France culminated at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, which meant that the prison was surplus to requirements until 1850, which meant that the prison was surplus to requirements until 1850 when it became a convict prison when deportation to the colonies abated. Thomas Turwitt was keen to establish Princetown. He built a residence called Tor Royal, which is now a private hotel, with a farm attached. Nearby, the Devonport Leet flows past. Turwitt's dream was to open up an infrastructure that would bring lime and fertilisers from Plymouth and take down farm produce and other products from the moor, such as granite. The dream was big, but the reality was not so certain.